Hey guys, welcome back to another mini art history lesson on the Project Return Online Classroom. I am your art coordinator, Ms. Madison, and I wanted to wish you guys a happy World Book Day today. So in honor of World Book Day, and still tying into art history, I thought we would talk about an illustrator. He is an English illustrator and political cartoonist named John Tenniel. But as an illustrator, we probably will most likely recognize his work from Alice's Adventure in Wonderland. So I want to talk a little bit about him today and also some of the beginning forms of book illustration and how we started making art in a more publication form. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I hope you guys enjoy this little mini lesson and have an enjoyable World Book Day. And if you guys have access to a printer, I'm going to include some links in the description box below this video of some John Tenniel's work that you could print out and use it as a coloring page if you happen to like his work. A lot of the books around this time were made in a more etching style because that's how they had to be reproduced, was using wood blocks. Uh, so his black and white um, line style is perfect for a coloring page. So John Tenniel was an illustrator born in 1820. Most of his life, from about 1850 to when he retired in 1901, he was working for a periodical called Punch. Every week he was releasing political and satirical cartoons. Um, but even then, we probably still mostly know him from his book illustrations. He was the primary book illustrator for Alice's Adventure in Wonderland in 1865, and then again the follow-up through the Looking Glass in 1872. So when we're talking about Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, written by Lewis Carroll, we have to think about the time period that this was taking place. And around 1865, up to that point, a book having 40 to 50 illustrations in it is incredible. Because the amount of time, and we're going to talk about the process that John Tenniel had to go through, but the amount of time that it took to create an illustration that could get mass produced for publication at this time, it was a lot. So John Tenniel, doing the story for Lewis Carroll, really had to think about, all right, what specifically does he want? Carroll was known for being a little bit, uh, actually a lot of it, <laughs> specific about what he was expecting in each scene, and he was uh, known to be quite, quite difficult to work with. When it leads to the sequel, John Tenniel actually didn't even know if he wanted to work with him again um, and fought him back on it for almost two years because it was quite a difficult process to get this first book even out. So he had to think about each scene, working with the author. He had to sketch it out first lightly just to get an idea of what it is. Now what's going to end up happening is since we don't have copy machines like how we have now, each illustration is then going to have to be hand carved into wooden blocks. And then those wooden blocks are then going to have to be turned into copper plated blocks. And these electrotype blocks are kind of what, um, or actually are, what's used in the mass production of it to save the integrity of the wooden blocks and the sustainability of them. Now don't get me wrong, the copper plates, they still wore away. They still had to remake a lot of the plates, um, but it, because of that they were allowed to at least uh, keep the wooden blocks a little bit more, um, the originals, more in place. Now John Tenniel was definitely not a wood engraver. Once he had it all inked out, what he would then do is transfer it onto a wood block. He would transfer it in the reverse or flipped image of it. That way once it was finished, inked, and then put back onto the page for production, it was back in that same format that it was originally intended. So once it was reversely transferred on the wood blocks, it then got passed to a prolific wood engraving company called, and I hope I'm not butchering this name, the Daziel brothers, and then they would then hand carve each scene from this novel. These electrotype blocks, as they were called, were used for the mass production of the books. So the wood blocks, if they used those for every single book, if they just used them, they would fall apart really quickly. Think about all the little spaces inside the grooves of the wood. Every time you'd have to put any sort of ink in it, it would start to disintegrate really quickly and not be able to sustain mass production. Now the copper plates were able to hold a little bit better, um, but they did still get, they still got worn away a lot. Um, they still had to get remade. So you do see some um, differences between the different editions of the books because of this. It was hard to reproduce 100%, you know, carbon copies. Because like I said, didn't have like just a copy machine or anything like that for mass production. So it was um, a lot different process and a lot more of a strenuous process. Now John Tenniel is an English artist, but I do want to take note of the golden age of illustration in America. Coming out of the 1800s and then leading into the 1900s is really a time where we're following industrial expansion in America. So we're having increased paper production, it's cheaper to produce paper, distribution is easier than it was before. 
So we see an increased notoriety and excellence in illustrators because book illustration, magazine illustration, just general publication was a lot easier to get out and mass produce. And people were starting to see the benefits of having art paired with it. It's one of the reasons why I love publication design so much is because it's really about enhancing and trying to get across what you're communicating. It's all communication arts. We can read a magazine article all day, but when you have an illustration paired with it that also just wraps it together in such an intriguing way, you can't help but to not only want to read it in the first place, but then have a better understanding of it once you've finished reading it. And when you're reading a book, think about a children's book. When I was a child, it would be way less fun getting, <laughs> getting a book read to you if there wasn't pictures paired with it. And all of that was made possible from the beginnings of what book illustration was. So I really just wanted to throw that out there for today. I graduated with a concentration in publication design, so books and the art that goes in them is really special to me. And so I hope this can help you guys uh, appreciate a little bit more about the work that goes into it, especially Alice's Adventure in Wonderland, because it's such a classic. And when you know how much work went into each artfully made page, uh, I think you can appreciate it a lot more. So thank you guys. If you have access to any sort of reading ability today, a book, online book, audio book, uh, this would be a day to do it. Um, literature is another way that we can expand our mind. It is another form of art. And I hope you guys have a wonderful World Book Day. And I miss you guys. Right. Bye.